Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about the greatest common factor of two numbers and the simplification of fractions. Let's start by defining what a factor is. Let's say I want to find the factor of the, the factors, all the factors of the number 16. What is a factor of 16? It is basically any number that I can divide 16 with and get a perfect division with no remainders or uh, decimal results. So, except for one, of course, one doesn't count. I can divide 16 by two. I can divide 16 by four. I can divide 16 by eight. And I can divide 16 by itself, 16. Okay, so these are all the factors of 16. Now let's say I want to find all the factors of the number 20. Okay, so again, I can divide 20 by 2, I can divide 20 by 4, by 5, by 10, and of course itself, 20. What would I call, though, a common factor of 16 and 20? That would be a number that I can divide both 16 and 20 by. So is 16 a factor of both um, 16 and 20? No, because I can't divide 20 with 16, although I can divide 16 by 20. Is 10 a common factor of 16 and 20? No, because I can't divide 16 by 10. Is 5? No, because it's not here among the factors of 16. Is 4? Well, yeah, because I can, I can divide both 16 and 20 by 4. It is among the factors of both numbers. Is 2 a factor of 16 and 20? Yes, because I can divide both numbers with 2. So 2 and 4 are what I would call common factors of 16 and 20. What is, though, the greatest common factor of 16 and 20? Well, that's the biggest number that I can divide both of these numbers by. Is it 2? No, because 4 also exists and is a common factor. 4 is the greatest number that I can divide both 16 and 20 by. Now, is there an easier way to find the greatest common factor of two numbers without actually writing all of its factors? And the answer is yes. We can use the process shown to find the least common multiple of two numbers but instead of doing it on both numbers at the same time, we now are going to do it on each number separately. How we do that, we make a line and we start dividing by the smallest number possible. So that would be two. Can I divide 16 with two? I can. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Then, can I divide 8 with 2? I can. 16 divided by 2, uh, sorry, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Can I divide 4 by 2? I can. And that makes 2. Can I divide 2 by 2? Yes, I can. And that makes 1. When I get to 1, I am done with 16. I have found I've broken it down into the simplest form possible. I move on to 20. Again, I write 20. I make this line. And I start dividing. I start with the smallest number possible. So can I divide 20 by 2? I can. 20 divided by 2 makes 10. Can I divide 10 by 2? I can. 10 divided by 2 makes 5. Can I divide 5 by 2? No, I can't. That would uh, either give me a remainder or a decimal result. 
So I instead try the next number. Can I divide 5 by 3? No. Can I divide 5 by 4? No. Can I divide 5 by 5? Yes. 5 divided by 5 makes 1. Again, I have now broken it down to its simplest form. Gotten 1. Here we go. And now, what I do in order to find the greatest common factor is I look at these numbers on the right for both of my results. Okay? I look at these numbers. And I start circling the ones that they have in common. Do they have one? This one has a two. This one has a two. So they have one, two in common. I circle it. This one has a 2, and this one has a 2. So I circle it. This one has a 2, but this one has no more 2s, so I can't, so I can't circle this one. Again, another, another 2, but no more 2s, so I can't circle that one. This one has a 5, but this one has no 5s, so I can't circle the 5. So what I circled on both sides was two twos. To get the greatest common factor, I multiply them with each other. So 2 to, uh, times 2, which makes 4. And as we saw in the beginning of the video, 4 is the greatest common factor of 16 and 20. And that's how I find the greatest common factor of two numbers. Now, where would I actually use this? I would use this if I wanted to simplify a fraction. Let's do an example like this really quick. Let's say I have 30 over 45. I have this uh, fraction right here, okay, 30 over 45. And I want to write it in its simplest form possible. What I would do is I would find the greatest common factor of 30 and 45. So I'd write 30, make the line. Can I divide 30 by 2? Yes. Makes 15. Can I divide 15 by 2? No. So I move on. Can I divide 15 by 3? I can. Makes 5. 5 by 3? No, I can't do it. 5 by 4? No, I can't do it. 5 by 5? Yes. It makes 1. Okay? That's one number down. Then I move on to 45. Can I divide 45 by 2? No, I can't. It will not give me a good result. Can I divide it by 3? Yes. 45 divided by 3 makes 15. 15 divided by 3? Yes, gives me 5. 5 divided by 3? No. 5 divided by 4? No. 5 divided by 5? Yes, gives me a 1. And now I circle what they have in common. Do they have a 2 in common? No. Do they have a 3? This one has a 3, and this one has a 3. This one has another 3, but this one doesn't have a second 3. This one has a 5, and also this one has a 5. So what I found in common was 1, 3, and a 5. So I multiply 3 by 5. 3 by 5 makes 15. So the greatest common factor of 30 and 45 is 15. So I go back here and I divide both of these numbers by 15. 30 divided by 15 makes 2, and 45 divided by 15 makes 3. And this, 2 thirds, is the simplest way to write this fraction. It is this fraction simplified. So if it is requested of me that I simplify a fraction, that's how I do it. Thank you and have a good weekend. See you on Monday.